In short, the people who would remember you after you're gone. Even as we speak, every member of your personal constellation is under our surveillance, a particle beam targeting each of their brain stems. At my signal, they will all cease to exist. There. All gone. In a very distant future, humankind has conquered most of the galaxy. Ruling at the head of this vast empire is a body of three emperors, Brothers Dawn, Day and Dusk. All three of them are clones of the first emperor, Cleon I. After solving a very complex math problem, Gail Dornick is invited to Trantor, the capital planet of the empire, by Harry Selden. Arriving on the planet, Gil is picked up by Raish Foss and taken to Selden. However, upon meeting him, he tells her that they will be arrested the next day, because using psychohistory, he has predicted that the Empire will eventually fall. As Selden predicted, they are arrested and a tribunal is held. Before the Emperors and the galaxy, Selden claims that civilization will fall within a couple of centuries and will usher in a dark age lasting 30,000 years. However, if he is allowed to build his foundation, which is a repository of almost all of the galactic knowledge, he can shorten the Dark Age to a mere thousand years. With the three emperors pondering over Selden's words, the Star Bridge, the huge space station on Trantor, is blown up by terrorists, an event which Gale felt coming moments before it happened. After this event, Brother Day decides to exile Selden and Gale to the distant planet of Terminus to build his foundation in case his predictions come true. 35 years later, the Warden of Terminus, Salvor Hardin, approaches the mysterious vault and is unaffected by its null field. Back to the immediate aftermath of the Starbridge bombing, Demerzel, the right-hand woman of the Emperors, is unable to identify the group of terrorists responsible. But having proved that the two bombers were from the planets Anacreon and Thespis, Brother Day accuses those planets of the attack and decides to set an example for the entire galaxy by bombing both planets to a wasteland. Meanwhile, Selden, Gale and other scientists are headed to Terminus to build the foundation. With their journey taking more than four years, Gale and Raish slowly fall in love and become a couple. But everything is turned upside down when Gale is somehow made aware that something is wrong. Locating Raish, she finds him after he has stabbed and killed Selden. In a hurry, Raish puts Gale into an escape pod together with the knife he used to kill Selden and ejects her into space. In a flashback from Demerzel 400 years earlier, Cleon I is saddened by the fact that he will not see his life's work, the Starbridge, finished and tells this to her, revealing her to be an android. 19 years after the Starbridge bombing, it is revealed how at all times three clone emperors must be alive when Brother Dusk becomes Brother Darkness, indicating that his time has come and he must be destroyed after a new Brother Dawn is given life, with the old Brother Day becoming Brother Dusk and the old Dawn becoming Day. With Demerzel overseeing this transition, a new Brother Dawn is born, while the old Brother Dusk is returned to dust. On the other side of the galaxy, the Foundation scientists land on Terminus and after seeing the vault, try to reach it but are repelled by its null field. 30 years later, somehow feeling that the vault's null field is expanding, Harding goes to investigate but is taken prisoner by the Anacreons, whom had arrived on Terminus earlier that day. 35 years after the destruction of the Star Bridge, Brother Dawn meets Gardner Azura and they seem to quite like each other. Meanwhile, Brother Day and Dusk are informed that Proxima Opal, the leader of the religion of Luminism, has died. The Emperors want Zephyr Galat to succeed her, but Zephyr Halima is becoming increasingly popular. The problem with Halima is that she believes that the soul is connected to only one body, and with the Emperors being clones, they are thus subhuman. Learning of this, Brother Day tells Dusk that he will attend the funeral of Proxima Opal instead of him. Back on Terminus, Harding uses the Null Field to incapacitate her captor Farah. 
Using telepathy, Hardin learns that Farah is the Grand Huntress of Anacreon, the surviving military leader of her planet. In a flashback, it is shown how on Gale's home planet Synax, technology and science was forbidden. Together with other acolytes of the Seer Church, Gale finds a heretic professor and he is publicly drowned. Secretly using a science book, Gale wins a math competition, leading her into the arms of Selden. Now, after awakening from her cryo sleep, she realizes that her escape pod has made it to a ship, the Raven. She discovers that she has been sleeping for 35 years. The ship's AI tells her that she, together with Raish, is held responsible for Selden's death, with Raish being spaced for his crime. Using her intelligence, she figures out that the ship is heading for Helicon, Selden's home planet. Just then, a seemingly holographic version of Selden appears on the ship. On Terminus, Farah goes her way into the power generating tower and knocks the settlement's shields out. With the shields down, the Anacreon forces storm the settlement and Farah reveals to Hardin that she blames Selden and his predictions for the destruction of her planet, since Selden told the Emperors of the fall of the Empire, with Brother Day annihilating her people to try to prevent the Empire's downfall. Arriving on Maiden, a moon and the home of Luminism, Brother Day is welcomed by only Zephyr Halima, his ideological opponent. During the funeral traditions, Brother Day voices his favor for Zephyr Gilad, but Halima hijacks the funeral and wins the crowd by saying that the soul has infinite growth potential due to constant reincarnation, which is not the case with the clones of Emperor Cleon, since they remain the same person in perpetuity. Meanwhile on Trantor, Brother Dawn reveals to his secret lover Azura that he is actually colorblind. After managing to escape her cell, Hardin, her father Abbas and her boyfriend Hugo attack the Anacreon's ships to maroon them on the planet. However, during the attempt, Hardin is incapacitated by a vision in which Selden instructs Rage to kill him so that their foundation does not collapse. Snapping back to reality, Hardin witnesses how her father sacrifices himself to blow up the Anacreon ships. That night, she and Hugo try to reach his ship, the Beggar, the last ship left, only to be ambushed by Farah, who takes her, Hugo and Louis, the leader of Terminus, to the Antor Belt. Arriving in the Antor Belt, they locate the Invictus, a planet-killing jump ship. Farah reveals that she wants to use the Invictus to attack Trantor, which is the first Foundation Crisis. They manage to board the Invictus, except for Hugo, who fears off course and heads into deep space. Louis then finds out that the Invictus will perform a random jump within a matter of hours. On Maiden, Brother Day is out of options and decides to walk the spiral, a 170 km walk in the desert heat, to be judged by the three goddesses of Luminism. On the Raven, Gale finds out that the holographic version of Selden was stored inside the knife Rache used to kill him. This version of Selden reveals that he instructed Rache to kill him and that Gale was supposed to lead the Foundation after his death. But since she walked in on Rache after she felt something was going to happen, the future changed. Together with Selden, she then concludes that she can feel the future. On Maiden, Brother Day leaves the Empire and himself vulnerable when he starts a spiral, since the heat and thirst claim many lives during the event. However, he completes his journey and reaches the Holy Pool in the cave. Upon his return, he tells the priestesses that he was granted a vision by the three goddesses, who then claim that he is untouchable since this vision means that he has a soul. Having defeated Zephyr Halima, Brother Day is preparing to leave, but not before sending Demerzel to poison Halima, with Demerzel realizing that Day was lying about his vision and had made it all up. Back on the Raven, Seldon finally reveals to Gale that he plans to build a second foundation at their destination of Helicon, a secret foundation hidden from the First and the Empire. But having lost faith in him after the death of Raish and events not happening as he predicted, Gale goes back into her escape pod and sets in a course for her home planet Synax, which will take her 138 years to reach. Meanwhile on the Invictus, Hardin and Lewis find out that someone has to be hooked up to the ship, which is a dead sentence, to change the location of the jump. However, before they act on their plan, Farah and Rowan blast in. Tasman ships, who were contacted by Hugo, who is still alive, then arrive. But before anything is concluded, the Invictus jumps. 
When Brother Dusk shows Brother Dawn a newly painted part of the Grand Mural, Dawn realizes that Dusk is aware of his shortcomings. In a panic, he manages to escape the palace and locate Azura. However, she reveals to him that she is part of an insurgent group and they have been planning to replace Dawn for years with a copy of him, which is only loyal to them. But being the wise brother, Dusk had allowed Dawn to escape to locate the rebels and has them all killed, even the fake Dawn. Only taking Azura prisoner and brother Dawn back with him to be judged by brother Day. On the other side of the galaxy, Harding finds out that Lewis has brought the Invictus above Terminus, but at the cost of his own life. On the planet, she discovers that everyone is rendered unconscious by the ever-increasing null field of the vault. However, using the Prime Radiant, the small vault containing all of Selden's psychohistory data, she manages to unlock the vault and everybody is woken up. The Anacreons and Tespins then hold each other at gunpoint, with Farah threatening to kill all the Tespins and Termini. But the hostilities are surprisingly ended when Hardin shoots an arrow straight through Farah's throat. It is then that from the vault a man appears, the same man who started it all, Harry Selden. On Trantor, Brother Day discusses with Brother Dusk what to do with Dawn. Day wants to forgive and move on, but Dusk is less forgiving. Witnessing this, Demerzel shockingly kills Dawn in order to prevent further infighting and claims to serve the Empire above everything else. The Emperors then discover that the genetic alteration wasn't limited to Dawn. They are told that the source of their cloning, Cleon the First's body, has been tampered with as well, with they being informed that he and all future clones will no longer be pure copies. After emerging from the vault, Seldom reveals that this version of him is made from his real organic tissue, his casket and other star stuff found in space, with all the elements together becoming the mysterious vault. He explains to the Anacreons and Tespins that the hostility between them was created by Cleon II to prevent them from becoming a superpower and lays the foundation towards an alliance. Mary, Harden's mother, reveals to her that she is actually not her biological mother, but that she is the daughter of Gale and Rage. Harden now believes that her psychic power stemmed from Gale and decides to go look for her. Going into cryo sleep, she arrives on Synax before Gale, who finally arrives there as well after 138 years since she left the Raven. Once there, Gale locates Harden, with Harden giving her the Prime Radiant.